Streaming live now on News8000.com. You're watching WKBT Lacrosse. This is News 8 Now, this morning. Good morning, everyone. I'm Alexandra Carter. And I'm Derek Sibley. It is Thursday, October 26th, 2023. Thanks for starting your Thursday with us. Yeah, we're almost toward Friday. We are almost there, <laughs> yeah. Getting closer and closer. Yeah. So any big plans for the weekend? Uh, for the weekend, um, probably just kind of hanging out. You know, it's going to be a little bit colder. Yeah. And, you know, maybe even a little bit of snow Saturday. Yeah, it'll be know? a good weekend to stay inside, maybe get cozy, maybe watch some Halloween movies. Halloween movies, exactly. That's <laughs> good perfect. Idea. Yeah, because Halloween start is on Tuesday. Yeah, crazy that it's yeah. already almost here. I know, it's insane how <laughs> fast the holidays are approaching yes. as well. So um, we're also tracking some rain here this morning, so you might want to keep that in mind for that uh, morning commute here as you head outside. As you can see, most of the rain is currently falling across our southern communities at this hour. Uh, Decorah east into Viroqua, especially you folks are looking at some heavy rain. Also into the Hillsborough area. Adams and Juneau County, uh, you're looking at some of that rain here currently falling in your neighborhood as well. On much of our central zones, not typically seeing the heavy rain, but just mainly seeing some very light rain showers, though. I think we're seeing some heavy rain mainly to the north here, too, along New Richmond, Apple River, Rice Lake, outside of the viewing area. Most of the Chippewa Valley is looking quiet, just looking at some rain moving towards the northeast currently. Today's planner uh, showing that scattered showers and some thunderstorms will be off and on uh, throughout the day. High temperatures uh, mainly into the 60s, so enjoy this mild day while it lasts because, again, it will be turning cooler. We'll talk about that later. Uh, dog walking forecast today, again, that could be affected uh, by the morning walks with some of those showers here moving in this afternoon through this evening. So, again, we'll have a check on your school cast. I'll time out the rain here coming up in the full weather forecast in a few minutes. Alexandria? We'll see you then, Derek. Thank you. Let's get to some news now this morning. A former Toma High School coach accused of sexual contact with a 17-year-old student was sentenced yesterday. 27-year-old Caitlin Sankey was sentenced to two years probation. No contact with the victim or anyone under the age of 18. She's also required to join the sex offender registry. According to a previous press release, Toma police and Toma High School administrators started an investigation after receiving information about a coach engaging in sexual conduct with a student. In June, Sankey pleaded guilty to having sexual intercourse with a child 16 or older. One man is dead after he was hit by a car while riding his bike in Eau Claire. According to the Eau Claire Police Department, a vehicle hit 55-year-old Keith Nichols just before 10 p.m. last Thursday at the intersection of East Claremont Avenue and London Road. Nichols died after being taken to the hospital. Police say the vehicle had the right of way at the intersection when the crash happened and the bicycle did not have any lights. Wisconsin State Patrol is assisting with the investigation. Election security was the focus of a forum in La Crosse last night ahead of the 2024 election. Wisconsin Elections Commission Administrator Megan Wolf joined La Crosse's city and county clerks and former 94th District Assemblyman Mike Hipsch at the County Administrative Center. The organization Keep Our Republic invited them to educate the public on the security of Wisconsin's electoral process. Wolf and the clerks offered their expertise on how our votes are counted and kept secure during elections. We will continue to have this discussion, but the minute that you say this election is rigged, I'm walking away. That's when we no longer keep our republic. We always have really close elections here in Wisconsin, and uh, that is going to heighten emotions, uh, regardless of who's on the ballot. And so I think you know our, our job is to continue to find ways to create that engagement and answer people's questions about elections. Keep Our Republic will host similar discussions over the next year across the state. The La Crescent Animal Rescue may keep its doors open. Earlier this month, the shelter posted on Facebook it was at risk of losing the city-owned building it operates out of. The shelter says it can only expand its services with city approval. Last night, officials met to find a way to make that happen. News 8's Dua Israr spoke with the shelter to find out more. Just across the river, a few residents are making their voice heard. The La Crescent Animal Rescue serves roughly 150 animals every year. We see the need, we hear it every day from our, our constituents and, and the citizens around us. The future of the rescue, though, remains uncertain. It's challenging to go ask for support. Sarah Ryberic sits on the board of directors for the rescue. This is Buffy. She had one little kitten. 
She says the rescue would like to expand and help animals in Houston County, too. It's not like animals know where the city line is. Um, and we often receive calls where, where animals have been maybe dumped on a farm or something outside of city limits. La Crescent Mayor Mike Pollinger says the city owns the property and has contracted the animal rescue for services within the La Crescent city limits. He says the city does not want to use its public funds to allow the rescue to expand its work into Houston County. I certainly understand his concerns um, and I think we we are open to that conversation with the city. Rye Barrick says she's looking forward to having conversations with city officials to find a solution. We understand our community wants it, we want it, the city wants it. Reporting in La Crescent, the West Rye, News 8 Now. The mayor says if the city's partnership with the animal rescue is dissolved, the city has volunteers and members of the police department to help with day to day needs. As the weather gets colder, Catholic Charities in La Crosse is ready to welcome anyone who needs a place to go to warm up. Starting next week, its warming center will open for the season. Right now, it's getting everything set up ahead of the winter, including making sure they have enough staff and meals. Every year, Catholic Charities of the Diocese of La Crosse help thousands of residents, including the homeless population. We really want to focus on homelessness prevention. We try to help folks get ahead of maybe being homeless. So maybe you're noticing that your pay has been cut or your expenses have gone up. We try to work with folks on budgeting and that sort of thing um, to make sure that we can try to keep you out of homelessness. The warming center, which is located on 3rd Street, opens from November 1st to May 1st. The Vernon Electric Cooperative is bringing solar energy to low-income residents. The co-op recently announced construction is complete on its solar array, which is made of more than 3,000 solar panels. The co-op is granting the nonprofit Cooley Cap access to 550 of those panels so low-income families can get access to cost-saving renewable energy. Yet low income households pay a significantly higher amount of their income um, on energy costs, especially electricity. So if we can reduce their energy costs by 10%, 20%, we know that that will make a meaningful difference in their life. Cooley Cap will be part of the co-op for the next 10 years. A downtown lacrosse store is being recognized for its inclusive hiring practices. The Duluth Trading Company was honored as part of National Disability Employment Awareness Month. The Wisconsin Department of Workforce Development says the lacrosse Duluth store was specifically selected for its supportive environment. The store partners with organizations like Aptiv to employ people with disabilities. Duluth store manager says the partnerships are key to the store's success. Creating those partnerships with both Aptive, DVR, um, it, it really laid the groundwork for resources because sometimes it does take a village to be able to properly support someone and having those resources was essential. Around 24 different businesses in the state are being honored for their inclusive efforts. While the events are to honor existing business practices, the DWD hopes they inspire other businesses to provide more opportunities for people with disabilities. Still ahead on your consumer news this morning, the post-pandemic economy is changing the way Americans spend. We'll take a look at rising prices and interest rates and the surprising reason why Wisconsinites may be better off than the rest of the country. And Halloween is almost here and more Americans are expected to celebrate the spooky holiday this year. We'll have some tips and tricks to help not scare your wallet. That and more coming up this morning. Every morning we send you to break with something to put the good in your morning. But with Halloween right around the corner, we're doing things a bit differently this week. So rise and shiver. So here's something to put a spooky in your morning. Zombies who bike together, bike brains together. This was the scene in Key West this week as thousands of locals donned their best zombie getups. Some of them are really impressive. They cycled along the island's scenic shore dressed as zombies. The annual zombie bike ride kicked off Key West's Fantasy Fest. That is a 10 day celebration with more than 100 events, including an extravagant parade, costume competitions and a masquerade ball. The festival began in 1979 as a way to boost tourism to the island. Although Though it has a reputation for wild partying, Fantasy Fest has become more family friendly. You see some little zombies right here, and this guy's really into it. 
and the emphasis is now on creative costumes. About 75,000 people attend each year. Don't go anywhere. Your consumer news at News 8 Now This Morning is next. Rain showers do continue across the Cooley region this morning with the majority of the heavier rain still focused down to the south. You can see a Wilmington Decorah uh, towards the west looking at some rain. Very heavy rain currently falling in Viroqua, so just watch out for that morning commute here around Vernon County into Hillsborough. You're also looking at some heavy rain. Uh, light rain currently focused along our central zones here this morning, including La Crosse as well. Meanwhile, in the Chippewa Valley, you are looking much drier, including Eau Claire County. There are some Heavier showers, though, back towards the north and west that I'm watching. But for the majority, everything is moving its way towards the northeast this morning. I checked now on your zone forecast today. Our high temperatures yet uh, again pretty mild. Highs into the mid to upper 60s. 68 today in Barry Mills. Heading south into Soldiers Grove, you'll be at 67 this afternoon. 65 in Westby and 68 in Brownsville. It'll be 65 today in Black River Falls and 67 in Trempolo and 64 today in Osseo. Meanwhile, in the Chippewa Valley, you're looking at those highs into the low to mid 60 64 today in Eau Claire uh, bus stop forecast this morning. Pack that umbrella. I think you'll need it as you could run to some showers. Temperatures rising to the upper 60s by dismissal with some more showers still in the forecast. I'll have a check on your full weather forecast and we'll time out the rain here coming up in a few minutes. Thank you, Derek. Turning now to your consumer news. Why does everything have to cost money? Today we're bringing you stories about the ups, downs and in-betweens of consumer expenses and how to keep a little extra jingle in your pocket. Kicking things off with a ray of light, new home prices dropped sharply in September. The median cost of a new home was 418,000. That's down from 430,000 in August and 477,000 a year ago. That's a 12.3% drop. Here in La Crosse, the median price is actually up by 11.9% from a year ago. However, local house prices are still far below the national average at $225,000. Experts are quick to note that it's not all good news though. Existing home sales continue to drop while mortgage rates have climbed to their highest point in 23 years. Mortgages aren't the only debt Americans are facing huge interest rates on. The Fed's Consumer Financial Protection Bureau says Americans paid $105 billion in credit card interest alone last year. That number is the highest ever. According to Forbes, the average credit card interest rate is about 28.17%, while TransUnion reports the average credit card debt is just over $6,000, when Wisconsin actually has the lowest average debt in the nation with a little under 5,000. Experts say people struggling with debt should consider consolidation options. One way to limit your credit card debt while you pay it off is reducing your spending on non-essentials like candy. But based on new numbers from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, that may not be so easy this year. Data from the agency shows candy prices have jumped 7.5% over the last year. That has outpaced inflation, which has averaged 3.7% since fall of 2022. Analysts are blaming the spike on higher sugar prices, which have increased by 35% due to extreme weather. But even if sugary snacks stack up on your bank statement, there are other ways to find spooky savings this Halloween season. Cole Higgins has some tricks and treats to help you save money and keep you from being too frightened when you check your balance. A spooky and pricey holiday. Total Halloween spending is expected to reach a record $12.2 billion this 2023. That's according to an annual survey from the National Retail Federation. But experts say you can still have a fun All Hallows Eve without overspending. Well, you definitely want to be the house with the good candy, <laughs> right? Jessica Allen from Living Well Spending Less has five tips to help you save money. The first step is to make a budget and stick to it. It doesn't take a lot of time to do this, 10, 15 minutes. According to the NRF survey, the average consumer plans to spend a record $108.24 and the biggest increase in spending came from costumes. To save, Allen recommends reaching out to your community on social media or within your neighborhood and swapping costumes. There is no reason that you can't go 
cheaper or even no cost at all on costumes. When it comes to candy, Allen says don't wait until the last minute to shop to avoid impulsively buying items right off the shelf. The NRF says total spending on decorations is expected to reach nearly $4 billion this year. So how do you trim that cost? Resist the urge to get into a decor contest in your neighborhood. Use what you have. Don't go overboard. And if you're hosting a Halloween party, go potluck. Who can get the snacks? Who can get the ice? Who can get the drinks? Combine those receipts and split the cost evenly. Some good tips there. That does it for your morning consumer news. Let's check back in with Derek now for a look at today's forecast. All right, thanks so much for that, Alexandra. We're still tracking some scattered showers across the Cooley region now with the majority of the heavy rain still focused down to the south. Uh, areas like Viroqua still getting pummeled by some very heavy rain here currently moving through your neighborhood. Also now east into Hillsboro, you're looking at some heavy showers also moving through this morning and Adams and Juneau County still looking at some heavier rain. Uh, some of this is now pushing into southern um, Monroe County while the rest of us are just looking at some light showers across our central zones. But if you're in the Chippewa Valley. Things are still looking very dry, still looking at some heavy rain, mainly focused well to your north and west. I don't think that's going to bother you necessarily because as you can see, everything is moving towards the northeast here currently. Uh, let's take a look at the wider view and you can see what's happening. We have we still have this very broad trough of low pressure uh, back towards the west that we've been dealing with here over the last few days and it still continues to affect us here today, pumping in a lot of moisture with cloud cover and abundance of rain here and that's definitely not a bad thing because we are still in a drought deficit across the area, so we can definitely use the rain. 61 degrees with wet streets here currently and at La Crosse. Meanwhile, in Eau Claire, things are pretty dry, as you can see outside from the uh, traffic camera. 57 degrees, the temperature here. I think we will see some more scattered rain showers, not just this morning, but really throughout the day. And some of these may even turn into thunderstorms as well as we head into this afternoon and also heading into early on this evening. So as we time things out on Sky Tracker, you can see by 10 o'clock, still looking at some scattered showers moving through the area. A few embedded thunderstorms develop here as we head into the five o'clock hour or so. I think we start to see things wind down though by around 11 o'clock tonight with still some leftover cloud cover heading into tomorrow morning. I think this may be our last chance of seeing some rain showers here uh, by around 6 a.m. And then you can see it moving its way towards the northeast by the afternoon. Still some leftover clouds here. It will be much cooler though for the day on Friday as a cold front is forecast to move into the area uh, by tomorrow morning which is going to help cool us down a bit. Now the clouds are going to start to increase along with moisture yet again as I'm watching yet another storm system back to the west. You see the colors here highlighted in blue? Well, that is actually snow and some of the models still indicate that it will continue to move east and give us a chance of seeing scattered snow around here for Saturday afternoon to Saturday night. That will be the first time this season that we may see some snow. So we'll keep our eyes on that here as we head into the weekend. But after the precipitation in general does clear out, we're looking at a mix of clouds and sun heading into next week with highs much cooler into the upper 30s and low 40s and low temperatures also responding to the cold dropping into the 20s and 30s by this weekend. Stay tuned though. We're back with much more news and weather still to come on News 8 Now this morning. For now, we're sending in a break with a look what happened on the state in history for October 26. We'll be right back. Welcome to the Morning Blitz. We've got a big night for a few of our area volleyball teams as they are just two wins away from making it to state. Tonight, both the Onalaska and Holman volleyball teams will be making their way to Wanakee for section semifinals. Holman will be taking on the number three seed in Verona and Onalaska will be taking on the top seed in Wanakee. Then in Division 7, Royal and Waniwak Center facing off for what will be the third time this year but now it's with a spot in the section finals on the line. Panthers has swept the regular season, but the Wolves were the ones in Green Bay last year. Very excited for that one. Two more games. West Salem, they made it to state last year as well. They'll be in Sauk Prairie and in Division Three. The Blue Gold still in it. They'll be up in Stratford. Over in Minnesota, the Winona girls soccer team earned their first ever win at state last night with a 4-2 victory over Cloquet Carlton. The Windhawks will be taking on Benilde St. Margaret's in the semifinals on Tuesday. The NBA season is here and tonight the Bucks are back in action. Giannis 
starting off the season with a new contract extension and no distractions. He's got his full attention focused on the task at hand, bringing another championship to Milwaukee. And with the help from his new friend and teammate, Dame Lillard, Giannis is confident that will happen. He's hungry. Uh, we, we want to win. Uh, we have we have three years to do that. You know, um, it might not happen this year, it might not happen next year, but it's going to happen. Uh, speaking to existence. A motivated Giannis is a scary Giannis, and I'm not sure there's anyone who wants to win another NBA title as bad as he does. Does Bucks start the season at home this evening against the Philadelphia 76ers? Let's end the blitz with some Timberwolves highlights. Anthony Edwards and company making their season debut last night. Pick it up in the second half. Wolves trailing and Pascal Siakam goes right up the middle for another two points. Raptors up six. Later in the quarter, Mike Conley throwing the lob to the big man. Rudy Gobert throws it down. That cuts into the lead. Fourth quarter, and it's Ant-Man time. Pull up three is good. Edwards cuts it to four. Last chance for Minnesota and Cats pass inside to Gobert is going to end up with Toronto. Why did Edwards not have the ball? I don't know. But the Timberwolves dropped the season opener 97 to 94. That'll do it for the Blitz. We'll see you tonight. You're watching News 8 Now. Expect more. We expect to hear from law enforcement officials in Maine later this morning. This as a manhunt is underway right now to find a person of interest in a number of shootings in the state's second largest city. Multiple law enforcement officials confirmed to CBS News that at least 20 people have been killed. Dozens more have been injured. CBS News correspondent Bradley Blackburn has the latest from Lewiston as the community grapples with this unspeakable tragedy. Following multiple shootings in Lewiston, Maine, police all over the state are searching for this man, 40-year-old Robert Card, who has been described as a person of interest. Card is considered armed and dangerous. If people see him, they should not approach Card or make contact with him in any way. Authorities say anyone who sees Card or has any information about the shootings should call 911 immediately. Police were seen searching a parking garage after a vehicle of interest was found minutes away in Lisbon, Maine. Public safety officials are warning residents in both communities to shelter in place. We have an active shooter. We have multiple injuries. Local authorities say the shooting began just before 7 p.m., first at a restaurant and then at a bowling alley a short time later. Out of nowhere, he just came in and there was a loud pop, and I just booked it um, down the lane and I slid basically into where the pins are and climbed up in the machine. According to a Maine law enforcement bulletin seen by CBS News, Card is a trained firearms instructor believed to be in the Army Reserves, and he has reported mental health issues. A reunification center has been set up at a middle school in the neighboring community of Auburn. This is a significant amount of shock going on with people that were actually witnesses. The FBI says it is assisting with the investigation, though Maine State Police will continue to take the lead. Police in parts of Lisbon, Maine this morning say businesses in the area of law enforcement activity will be closed for safety reasons. CBS Maine affiliate WGME is reporting schools are closed today in Lisbon, Lewiston and Bowdoin, where the person of interest is believed to be from. A little over three weeks after former House Speaker Kevin McCarthy was ousted from his post, a new man is holding the speaker's gavel today. Yesterday, Louisiana Republican Congressman Mike Johnson was elected by Congress into the Speaker of the House position. All Republicans who were present voted for Johnson, including Minnesota's first district congressman, Brad Finstad. In a post on social media website X, Congressman Finstad said, quote, I was proud to cast a vote in support of Representative Johnson on the House floor. Mike is a common sense conservative that our conference and our country needs. He has my full support and I have every confidence that under his leadership, our Republican majority is united and ready to get back to work for the American people. Congress still has until November 17th to pass a measure that would fund the government and avert a shutdown. 
We're learning more this morning about that fatal shooting at a Milwaukee area middle school we told you about earlier in the week. Germantown police responded Monday to reports of a person acting erratically in the Kennedy Middle School parking lot. When police arrived, the man climbed onto the roof of the school and shot at them. Police then shot and killed him. TMJ4 has now identified that man as a 32 year old from North Illinois. According to his family, he was an army combat veteran who was struggling with his experience in Afghanistan, where he served two tours. He'd driven up to Germantown to pick up items from an auction. He had no connection to the community, they say. Wisconsin wildlife officials unanimously voted to support a new wolf management plan. Many hunters and farmers disagree with that. The plan doesn't include a hard limit on the population, which is what hunters and farmers were hoping for. Farmers in northern Wisconsin are complaining that wolves are preying on their livestock, and hunters believe the animals are devastating the deer population. But there are fans of the plan. Conservationists say wolves haven't fully established themselves here and should be protected. The DNR estimates the wolf population is around 1,000 in Wisconsin. Wisconsin Republicans are adjusting a plan to pay for upgrades to the Milwaukee Brewers Stadium. The stadium funding has already passed the assembly, but the Senate doesn't have majority support. One new change the Senate is considering is a ticket tax on non-brewers events like concerts and monster truck rallies. That could offset the $400 million that's proposed to come from state funding. If the bill passed without any changes, the brewers would pitch in $100 million of their own and extend their lease through 2050. Senate Majority Leader Devin LeMahieu told our Milwaukee affiliate they'd like to see the brewers contribute more money. With the leaves changing and holidays like Halloween and Thanksgiving just around the corner, it may soon be time to prepare for the fast approaching winter months and of course, the dreaded snowfalls. Jason Rontala has some tips to help you get your home battle ready for this year's war against the snow and ice. Well, fall colors are still popping. It won't be long before scenes like this return to our great state. Bring it on, like embrace it, it's Minnesota. Uh, Charlie Hornig is a new homeowner and he's gearing up. So yeah, I'm getting ready. When it comes to winter preps. It's never too early. Bridaloni's manager Jim Lee says to make sure to clear gutters of leaves. That helps prevent damaging ice dams in the spring. Getting your gutters cleaned out, making sure that they're flowing properly and flowing away from the house are extremely critical this time of year, especially since we've had so much rain lately. It's actually a great time to get out there and get the gutters clean. Well, we've got um, the ice heat cables on the roof for preventing ice dams. One really important thing to do is to shut off your water. It prevents burst pipes and flooding inside your home. You also want to rake up as many leaves as possible. It prevents snow mold and gives you a healthier spring lawn. As far as inside your home, we you want to make sure you're going around looking at your windows. You want to be caulking up any gaps, anything that you've got around windows and doors. Check for cracks and gaps. It keeps your house warm, lowers energy bills, and keeps some other things out of your home. But it also stops the pests from coming in because this is the time of year where the pests are starting to come in the house. When it comes to shovels, snow blowers, and snow melt, Lee's advice is buy it sooner rather than later. Experts also recommend disconnecting your outside hoses and making sure there's no water left inside. Now here's Derek to tell us what to expect for our morning commute. No snow to worry about today, Derek, right? Right, exactly. Yeah. And we're not going to be worrying about any snow, Alexandria, but we may be talking about that, though, on Saturday, which we'll get to here later. As of right now, though, it's still raining across much of our central and southern communities. Viroqua and Cashton, much of southern and eastern Monroe County, as well as northern Vernon County, dealing with heavy rain. Adams and Juneau County also looking at some heavy rain this morning. If you're in the Chippewa Valley, things are looking much drier. A little bit of a light shower or drizzle that you could run to. The majority of of the heavier showers, though, is still focused back to our west. And as you can see, the motion is mainly towards the northeast. So the forecast today calls for 68 degrees for our high scattered showers.
showers and storms, cloudy with mild temperatures, southwest winds at 5 to 10. Heading into tonight, 48 degrees will be our temperature with some scattered showers, but overall a much cooler night, and the temperatures will only go down from there, which we'll get to here in a bit. But if you're mowing forecast today, I don't recommend it. Uh, you may run into some showers here with temperatures well into the 60s. I think we'll see some better conditions into next week, but it may be on the cool side. I'm going to check on that for the forecast one more time in a few minutes. Before we head to break, it's time to take a look at today's Look Who's Eight. All right, we'll start out with uh, Aiden, who is turning eight years old today. Now, he loves, uh, he's smart, uh, kind, and a loving big brother. And Calvin is also turning eight. He loves to play with his brother, wrestling, and having a birthday right before Halloween. You can see he has a Halloween birthday cake there. Oh, yeah, and I love the outfit, too, the SWAT man. Yes, <laughs> yes, that's a great costume. Looking out for people there. And, and uh, here's one you don't see every day. Logan, Noah, and Riley are all turning eight together. Now, Logan likes soccer, hockey, and reading. Uh, Noah likes soccer and hockey as well, but he's more into the Ninja Turtles and the reading thing. Uh, so Riley enjoys soccer uh, like her brothers, and she loves her dolls, gymnastics, and skating. So happy birthday to all three of you. Yeah, and hats off to their parents, too, because three children at one time. Ooh, that's a lot. Woo, yeah. 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 Crazy. <laughs> well, happy birthday again to all of them. And if you know a special someone turning eight weeks, eight months, eight years, 18, 18, 80 or 88 years old soon, we'd love to feature them. That's right. Just upload their photo to our website. It's news8000.com, and you want to look for the Submit Pictures button underneath the Home tab on our website. Stay with us. We'll have Enchanted Forest Executive Director Joe Carlson in studio next to talk about the Boy Scouts' upcoming trick-or-treat event. Scattered showers do continue to affect much of the Cooley region this morning. I'm still watching some showers mainly focused to our south. You can see areas like Prairie du Chien looking at some heavy rainfall. Also, if we move the radar a little bit north into our central and eastern communities, uh, you folks in Viroqua, Cashton, near the Sparta area, as well as Adams and Juneau County this morning as well, looking at some heavy downpours that are currently moving through your neighborhood. But meanwhile, if you're in the Chippewa Valley, well, you know, things have been pretty calm here this morning. Not really a whole lot, very dry, much of the rain still focused mainly to your north and west. And I don't really think it's going to bother you too much across our northern zones because as you can see, everything is moving its way towards the northeast. Now, there may, there, there may be some more rain coming as we are still under the influence of this trough of low pressure uh, positioned to our west, pumping in a lot of moisture, creating all those wet conditions as what, what we're seeing here currently in La Crosse, for example. 61 degrees, southeast winds at around 5 miles an hour. If you're in Eau Claire, 57 degrees is your temperature with a southeast wind at around nine miles an hour. Now, so far we have picked up uh, just over a half inch of rain in both Decorah and also down south in Basquebel. The rest of us is around a tenth of an inch, if not less than that, because the lighter rain here has been falling in those spots. Scattered showers will continue throughout the day today. Afternoon highs into the 60s, maybe a few thunderstorms as well as we head into this afternoon and also into this evening here too. Here's 10 o'clock this morning and you can see we're still dealing with scattered showers, still pushing their its way through much of the Cooley region. By 4 o'clock, we may even see a few thunderstorms develop across portions of our central zones there before beginning to clear as we head into tonight. Maybe a couple of light showers still possible near uh, Jackson County area. Here's 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. Still watching another round of some showers that could move their way in from the west there. Starting to clear out, though, by the time we reach uh, tomorrow afternoon, some leftover clouds will continue uh, throughout uh, Friday night here in some spots here as well. Now, we're going to start to increase the moisture again as we're watching another storm system position to our west. And yeah, we may even tap into some snow. That's what you're seeing here highlighted in blue because the temperatures may just be favorable enough to allow some of that precipitation to transition. And as it moves east, we could be looking at some scattered snow showers moving its way across the Cooley region Friday or Saturday afternoon and also into Saturday evening. So we'll watch out for that. So rainfall totals uh, between today and tomorrow, uh, probably around uh, just under an inch or so, if not less, in many spots. Here's a check on your eight day forecast, and you can see that we will keep uh, the precipitation chances through Saturday. We'll keep our eyes for possible snow there. And then as we head into next week, our highs drop into the upper 30s and low 40s, low temperatures in the 20s and 30s.
All right, Derek, thank you. Well, this morning we have uh, Executive Director of Gateway Scouting, Joe Carlson, with us live in studio to talk about a trick-or-treating event the Boy Scouts will be hosting on Saturday. So tell us a little bit about the Enchanted Forest for people who maybe don't know about it. Yeah, good morning. We're uh, excited to be hosting the 22nd annual uh, Enchanted Forest event down at Riverside Park this year. So families uh, with kids of all ages are invited to come out on Saturday morning and join us for uh, uh, a time to interact with a bunch of different great community groups. We've got businesses, student groups, nonprofits that'll be out uh, handing out candy, doing other activities with kids, all sorts of fun stuff. So how does the Enchanted Forest benefit the Scouts and what does it bring to the lacrosse community? Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a great way to provide a kind of a kickoff to the Halloween week for, uh, for families. Something that's been really fun the last couple years is to see parents bringing kids out and parents will actually comment that they remember coming to the Enchanted Forest when they were a seven-year-old yeah. and now they're bringing <laughs> their own five-year-old out kind of a generation later, right. which, which is neat. So we're excited to provide an opportunity for kids and families to have fun together. Yeah, and is there a recommended age, grade, uh, age group that this event is for? You know, really it's, uh, it's kids of all ages. So we've got kids that are coming out in strollers all the way up to, uh, all the way up to high school. So when it comes to the activities, is there like a specific order that people have to go through or is it just a kind of like a free for all type of thing? We've got a little bit of both. So we're asking families to uh, join us at the north end of Riverside Park, kind of up near the restroom area. Mm -hmm. And um, families will start on a set route. So they'll interact with about a dozen different treat stations in a specific order. And then after that, there's another dozen or so activities that uh, families can kind of pick and choose from as they want based on if they want to wait in line for a little bit for face painting or or uh, want to move on to the next thing. Yeah. Okay, so it sounds like there are a few other activities besides trick-or-treating, so just talk a little bit more about some of those other things. Yeah, in addition to groups that are distributing candy, we've got, uh, we've got uh, the uh, UWL Chemistry Club is out doing face painting, but then also helping kids make slime, so that's always a, uh, yeah. that's always a big hit for yes. everybody. Um, we've got some different scouting type activities like a uh, rope bridge that kids can participate on, but also classic things like the Pinewood Derby, uh, a little boat race, um, opportunities to do some axe throwing, things like that are happening as yeah. well. We've got some groups that are bringing out uh, trucks, motorcycles, things wow. like that for kids oh. to interact with. That so sounds there's fun. A, th a there's a lot, of, there's a lot of variety, a lot. yeah. Wow. Well, uh, getting back to the activities and trick-or-treating, are there gonna be, um, you know, with all the treat stations going on, uh, an activity to go along, is there gonna be an activity to go along, basically, with their candy handouts and things like that, or is it just kind of like, it's uh, yeah, it's split. So it's the first, yep. So yeah. the first half, it'll just be go through and, and get that candy. So we want to kind of keep people moving along quickly. You know, it might yeah. be a little cool on Saturday, yeah. so um, keep lines to a minimum. But then the second half of the event is uh, more of those activity type things. I would say families can plan to be down there for about an hour or so. Okay, great. Uh, and so remind us again of the time and the location. Yep, Riverside Park. So join us at the uh, at the north end, so to the north of the band shell, kind of towards the hatchery building is where the event will be. You can't, can't miss us. We're right there in the main area of the park. And um, families can purchase a ticket for a specific time slot. So 10 a.m., 11 a.m., oh. 12 or 1. Okay. We're there from 10 to 2 for the for the day. We ask people to pick a time slot just to kind of spread out the crowd a little bit. And yeah. do that ahead of time? Yep, do that ahead of time if you can. Okay. Uh, tickets are available online. I think the, the link is on the screen, gatewayscouting.org. Or you can drop into our uh, service center, which is located over near Hickson Forest, 2600 Quarry Road. Or you can join us on Saturday morning and get a ticket at the door too. So last time you were on the morning show, you mentioned the popcorn sales going on to the end of the month. Can you talk about that again? You know, can people buy the popcorn? Yeah, we've had scouts out uh, selling all sorts of popcorn this mm -hmm. month, so caramel yeah. corn, microwave popcorn, flavors that, uh, all sorts of stuff out there. We will right. have some of that available on Saturday. We've got uh, some of our, uh, some of our kind of top scout sellers, you know, said they wanted one more chance to try and get in front of the public. So we got a few yeah. kids that are coming out with a wagon load of popcorn on Saturday again. All right, great. We can't forget about the popcorn. No, right. <laughs> Thank you so much. And stay with us. We'll be right back. A former Tomah High School coach accused of sexual contact with a 17-year-old student was sentenced yesterday. 27-year-old Caitlin Sankey was sentenced to two years probation, no contact with the victim or anyone under the age of 18, and she's required to join the sex offender registry. According to a previous press release, Tomah police and high school administrators started an investigation after receiving information about an athletic coach engaging in sexual conduct with a student. In June, Sankey pleaded guilty to having sexual intercourse with a child 16 or older. Wisconsin wildlife officials unanimously 
supported a new wolf management plan. Many hunters and farmers disagree with it. The plan doesn't include a hard limit on the population, which is what hunters and farmers were hoping for. Farmers in northern Wisconsin are complaining that wolves are preying on their livestock, and hunters believe the animals are devastating the deer population. But there are fans of the plan. Conservationists say wolves haven't fully established themselves here and should be protected. The DNR estimates the wolf population is around 1,000 in the state of Wisconsin. As the weather gets colder, Catholic Charities in La Crosse is ready to welcome anyone who needs a place to go. Starting next week, its warming center will open for the season. Right now, it's getting everything set up ahead of the winter, including making sure they have enough staff and meals. Every year, Catholic Charities of the Diocese of La Crosse helps thousands of people, including the homeless. We really want to focus on homelessness prevention. We try to help folks get ahead of maybe being homeless. So maybe you're noticing that your pay has been cut or your expenses have gone up. We try to work with folks on budgeting and that sort of thing um, to make sure that we can try to keep you out of homelessness. The Warming Center opens from November 1st to May 1st. A downtown lacrosse store is being recognized for its inclusive hiring practices. The Duluth Trading Company in lacrosse was honored as part of National Disability Employment Awareness Month. The Wisconsin Department of Workforce Development says the lacrosse Duluth store was specifically selected for its supportive environment. The store partners with organizations like Aptiv to employ people with disabilities. Duluth store manager says the partnerships are key to the store's success. Creating those partnerships with both Aptiv, DVR, um, it, it really laid the groundwork for resources because sometimes it does take a village to be able to properly support someone and having those resources was essential. Around 24 different businesses in the state are being honored for their inclusive efforts. While the events are to honor existing business practices, the DWD hopes they inspire other businesses to provide more opportunities for people with disabilities. And as you head out the door this morning, temperatures are into the 60s, uh, looking at some scattered showers, still moving in across portions of the area, some of them producing some of those heavy downpours. I think we'll see some more scattered showers as the day goes on today, off and on, with high temperatures uh, into the mid to upper 60s. Now for tomorrow, highs drop a little bit into the low 60s. Some scattered showers still a possibility, mainly during the morning, and then not another chance of uh, precipitation Saturday, but in the form of snow, though, so that's different. We haven't seen that in a while. Uh, we'll probably be monitoring those trends as we head into Saturday. And it's also going to be getting much colder. And we're going to be dropping our highs in the 30s and Ooh. 40s next week. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. in time for Halloween. And you know what, Derek? I thought of the perfect Halloween costume for you. Oh, what's that? A snowman. A snowman. Because you are kind okay. of a snowman. And, you know, we were talking about the need for... Wait, what uh, makes me a snowman? I'm curious. Well, you know, you know about the snow and the weather. Oh, you tell okay. us when it's going to snow. Right. <laughs> um, we were talking about the need for warm Halloween costumes, too. So yeah. I think that would fit the bill. Yeah, I think that'd be cool. <laughs> well, I'll see if I can find a snowman okay. Halloween costume. We'll be, we'll Get be waiting. Get back to you on that one. We'll <laughs> definitely be waiting for that update. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We will see you back here at noon. Have a great day.